a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, Episode 1. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring awareness to the persecuted church around the world, to hear stories about how our brothers and sisters are persecuted simply because of their faith in Jesus Christ, and to count down the top countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch list. It is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers have gone backwards. Yesterday was number two. Today is number one. We will take a break through the month of December. And then in January, we will pick it up again, counting down the top 50 countries on the World Watch list 2021 reporting period. So there's just a little background on the podcast for those who might be new just joining us. With all that being said, it is Wednesday or Monday, November 30th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org. International Christian Concern has learned that on November 27th, an alleged terrorist attacked the Salvation Army's service post in central Sulawesi before burning six houses of church members. Four Christians were murdered, with three being butchered. Around 8 a.m., the Liwanu Lembontanga service post, located in Sigi Regency, Central Sulawesi, set up as an official effort by the Salvation Army in Indonesia, was attacked by the alleged terrorist. He set the church on fire before attacking Captain Arniato, Mrs. Mpapa, Lieutenant Abram Kako, and his wife, and burning down six houses of the church members. Out of the four victor- victims, three were hacked to death while the other was burned. In the video seen by ICC, the charred victim was pulled from a pile of ruins, with smoke still rising in the background. The fowler position of the body suggests the agony and pain endured by the victim before death. Limban Tungoa is located in the forest where access of information and transportation is limited. ICC will continue to follow up and learn more about the details of the attack. The Salvation Army is asking for prayers, quote, for the family of the victims, for the church, and for the peace of the region, unquote. Gina Go, ICC's regional manager for Southeast Asia, said, quote, ICC mourns the death of the Indonesian brothers and sisters who were brutally murdered by the alleged terrorist. We urge the Indonesian government to take necessary measures to hold him accountable and put him to justice. Such senseless act cannot be tolerated in the country that boasts Pancasila, the state ideology which promotes religious harmony and tolerance, unquote. So there, uh, again, just a horrifying story of what is very common uh, for our brothers and sisters around the world simply because of their faith in Christ, whether it's the government, whether it's Islamic terrorist groups, fundamentalist Islamic militant groups, fundamentalist Hindu groups, fundamentalist Buddhist groups are constantly coming after and targeting our Christian brothers and sisters simply because of their faith in Jesus Christ. This next story, also from persecution.org, and also just as tragic. Seven Christians were killed during two attacks on November 28th and 29th, according to a local resident. Samuel Alta told Morningstar News that Filani militants attacked and killed the seven people when they invaded Nguar Bido and Nguar Pa, Not only were these seven killed, but it is believed that two children were kidnapped and four other people people were injured. These types of attacks have been rampant in Kaduna State throughout 2020. Fulani militants have killed hundreds of people and caused mass mass displaced from many villages. They have also destroyed many churches in Kaduna and throughout the middle belt of Nigeria. Kaduna State Governor Nasil Al-Rafai May even made statements blaming the Christian victims of these attacks for the violence in the state. He has forced lockdowns in the state in an attempt to end the violence. However, these lockdowns have on several occasions led to further attacks on populations who are unable to move or flee. 
Despite these attacks, El Rufai continues to use lockdowns and fails to apprehend any of the perpetrators of the violence. So again, the, the stories coming out of Nigeria this year and the past two years, well over a thousand Christians have been murdered in the last two years throughout the areas of Nigeria and Kenya by Fulani militants, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram. These groups are, are very active and they target Christians on a on a regular basis. Again, over a thousand of our brothers and sisters throughout this region have been killed in the last two years. And as you see, not much has been done to stop it except for blaming the Christians for the violence that they endure uh, because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So let's be praying for our brothers and sisters in Nigeria as well as those in Indonesia. And that brings us to our world watch list country for today. Number one, which has been number one every year for the last 10 years since I've been doing this countdown. North Korea remains the number one country on uh, Open Doors USA's world watch list. So a little information. Uh, the region is Asia. Persecution type is communist and post-communist oppression. Persecution level is extreme. The population of North Korea is 25,727,000, of which about 300,000 are, are Christians, less than 1%. The main religion is atheism and traditional beliefs. The government is a single-party dictatorship, and the leader is Chairman Kim Jong-un. If Kim Jong Un is still alive, we don't. We don't. I don't even think we know that at this point. If North Korean Christians are discovered, they are deported to labor camps as political criminals, or even killed on the spot. Driven by the state, Christian persecution in North Korea is extreme, and meeting other Christians to worship is nearly impossible unless it's done in complete secrecy. A recent increase in diplomatic activity, starting with the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea, has not changed anything for Christians in the country. Christians must keep their faith completely secret. If a Christian has a Bible or part of one, it will be carefully hidden and only read when the believer is sure they are alone. Most Christians do not even tell their own children about their faith until the kids are older teenagers for fear that they may let something slip. When Christians are discovered, they will be arrested and imprisoned in one of North Korea's terrible labor camps, where they are worked like slaves and often tortured. Most are never able to escape. The news tells stories of the country's ambitions on the world stage, yet behind the headlines, a massive underground church of 200 to 400,000 Christians is growing in North Korea, and tens of thousands of these secret believers are held in North Korea's infamous labor camps. It is a miracle that this underground church is able to exist, but more than that, it is thriving and growing. One Christian has shared, quote, one day on the borders, one day the borders will open and we will unite with the South Korean and the Chinese church to bring the gospel to some of the darkest places on this earth, unquote. There have been raids against Christians and killings, but no details can be published for security reasons. Pastor Dong Cheo Kim, arrested in 2015, and two Korean-American Christian lecturers at the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, Tony Kim and Hak Sum Kim, arrested in April and May 2017, respectively, were all accused of espionage but released ahead of the U.S.-North Korean summit in June 2018. In a change of hiring policy, PUST is now reportedly looking for non-U.S. staff, a logical consequence of United States travel ban on American travel to North Korea. There have been more reports coming from North Korea, but for security reasons, no details can be given. Prayer points for North Korea. Pray North Korean officials will come to know God for change within the regime and that the power of evil will be broken. During a year when North Korea raised its profile on the world stage, Kim Jong-un continues to consolidate his power. Pray he will accept the one true God. Open Doors provides North Korean Christians with food, medicine, and clothing and safe houses for North Korean refugees in China. Pray the church is strengthened and encouraged to endure by this provision. Pray for Christians who suffer in prisons, labor camps, and remote areas to have hope. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much uh, for this time, for this year that we have had to go through uh, these top 50 countries on the world watch list, Lord, that you have given us time to, to come together um, through the internet um, to join our voices together to pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their, their faith in you, Lord. Uh, Father, we, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Indonesia 
uh, the families of those who were, were brutally murdered this last week. We pray that you bring comfort to the church there, to the Salvation Army's post there, um, and to the family members of those who were murdered. Father, we pray that you would strengthen their faith with their families' uh, willingness to stand firm in their faith, even unto being murdered, uh, standing firm in their faith in you, Lord. And we pray that you will use that witness and the proclamation of the gospel by those Christians uh, who remain to draw others to yourself. And we pray the same thing for our brothers and sisters in Kaduna State in Nigeria, Lord, where these Fulani militants have, have rampaged for, for over two years now killing so many of our brothers and sisters. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to raise up those who would preach the gospel, even in the face of, of life-threatening danger, Lord, that they would proclaim your gospel, that you would use that to draw people to a uh, relationship with you. We pray for our brothers and sisters in North Korea. We pray that, that all the officials there, especially Kim Jong-un, would hear your gospel and turn to you in repentance and faith that this regime of evil would come to an end there, Lord, and that, that you would open up the doors of this country, that, that Christians uh, of, uh, can, can join, the Christians there can join with the Christians of South Korea and China, as they have said, and make this proclamation to these dark areas where, where your word is, uh, is hidden away uh, because of fear and, and opposed greatly by the governments of these areas, Lord. We pray for open doors as they are providing for the, the Christians and the underground church there. We pray that the provision will be uh, sufficient for those who are there and that also they will receive discipleship um, and training as they grow in their faith in you, Lord. And we pray for uh, those who are already locked away in prisons and labor camp who are enduring uh, beatings and and just untold uh, hardship, Lord, in those in those labor camps and those prisons. We pray that their their faith would be strong, that they would stand firm, that they would preach the gospel to their captors, their their guards, and other inmates, and that you would be glorified in that, Lord. And again, we pray that in all of these things that you would receive glory as more and more people come to know you through the proclamation of your gospel, even in the face of, of life-threatening persecution, Lord. And uh, it is for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys for everybody who has been part of this for not just this year, but for the last 10 years that we've been doing uh, this podcast and making, uh, bringing awareness to our brothers and sisters who are persecuted just because of their faith in Jesus Christ, because they hold firm to the name of Jesus and these other groups, these, these radical, not radical, fundamentalist uh, religious groups and these uh, extreme uh, governments are, are persecuting them and trying to, to squash the, the, the name of Christ and the church, his bride in these areas. And so uh, thank you for, for joining with us. Again, you can invite anybody, if you know anybody who would be willing to take 15 to 20 minutes out of their day to join us, to be more aware of what's happening around the world to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to lift up their voice in, in prayer for them. Uh, send them over to the Fifth Seal Facebook page. They can join there. I'll get them uh, approved to be part of that. Or they can head over to the YouTube channel, The Evangelical Norm. Subscribe and get all the content that is released over there. Or search for The Fifth Seal on any any platform where you get your audio uh, podcasts. Google Play Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you get your audio podcast, you can get it. Put in your earbuds if you don't have time to watch a 15-minute video and take us with you while you do your work and, and continue to join voices with us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. And uh, as always, uh, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, January sometime, as soon as that... World Watch or World Watch List 2021 is released. Uh, Soli Deo Gloria. <laughs>